Welcome back to Tipton Bros. Today, we'll be discussing the Japanese Kawasaki Ki-64 Heavy Fighter. Design, development, service history, and specifications will be provided. Before we begin, I must disclose that I am no expert and never claim to be. Now, let's get into it. In early 1943, the Imperial Japanese Army Air Service would approach Kawasaki Heavy Industries in pursuit of a true wonder weapon, one that could shift the tide of war in the Pacific Theater. A heavy fighter capable of halting Allied fighters and bombers alike from further encroachment into the heart of Japan, being guided by established aircraft designer Takeo Doi. Kawasaki moved swiftly, with engineers putting great emphasis on armament and power output for the experimental aircraft. What emerged was a sleek and promising platform, dubbed the Ki-64. The potent heavy fighter was a glimmer of hope in the crumbling empire of Japan. In less than a year's time, a prototype was completed, and in December of 1943, the Ki-64 would make its first flight, under close observation from the Japanese Army Air Service. The heavy fighter performed marvelously, impressing onlookers with its streamlined appearance and blazing speed. Subsequent flights followed suit, leaving officials with a hopeful outlook on Japan's newly minted ace. This was until the Ki-64's fifth and final flight. Directly after takeoff, the heavy fighter's second engine, located aft of the cockpit, caught fire, causing a forced landing. Not only was this issue never resolved, but the entire project was abruptly abandoned following this mishap, a short and rather anticlimactic ending for the Ki-64. Despite its short-lived success, it is the internal arrangement and ingenious design of the Ki-64 that makes it truly fascinating. The heavy fighter utilized two Kawasaki Ha-40 Army Type II liquid-cooled inline piston engines, one located in the nose of the aircraft and the other cleverly concealed just behind the cockpit. Both systems were connected by a drive shaft. This duo was referred to as the Ha-201 engine, which powered a pair of three-bladed, contra-rotating propellers, producing upwards of 2,400 horsepower. An impressive feat to disguise two full-sized engines within the fuselage of a fighter. Another resourceful element implemented by Takeo Doi was the placement of radiators in either wing. These cooling surfaces were located on the distal wing structure, with the left wing cooling the front engine and the right wing cooling the rear engine. Not only was this a brilliant use of space, but it also provided balance and efficiency to the Ki-64, a testament to the mind of Takeo Doi. Performance and specifications of the heavy fighter are eerily reminiscent of the P-51D Mustang. The Ki-64 had a maximum speed of 430 miles per hour at an optimal power altitude of 16,000 feet. Service ceiling was more than double at an impressive 39,000 feet. Range of the Kawasaki Ki-64 was 620 miles, or 540 nautical miles. This is one of the few areas that is underwhelming. The aircraft had a crew of just one, a length of 36 feet, a height of 14 feet, and a total wingspan of 44 feet 3 inches. Gross weight was a hefty 11,244 pounds. We'll put up the performance numbers and characteristics of the P-51D so you can more easily identify their similarities. Armament for the Ki-64 was menacing, displaying four 20mm Ho-5 Army Type II autocannons a parallel set mounted in the nose of the fuselage, and one mounted in either wing. The autocannon placements in the wing structure could be replaced with the 12.7mm Ho-103 Type 1 machine gun, depending on combat requirements. The one existing prototype surprisingly survived the war, although not in one piece. With the airframe and much of the cooling system being captured by U.S. forces, given the Allied codename ROB, and shipped to the Wright-Patterson Air Base near Dayton, Ohio, where they remain today. I hope you've enjoyed today's brief overview of the Japanese Kawasaki Ki-64 Heavy Fighter. We are a small channel, so a like is greatly appreciated, and recommendations are always welcome. Again, I am no expert, and never claim to be. Until next time, on Tipton Bros.